Hello, Jerry. Uh, Hi. So, Jerry, you're you're one of the uh, product designers or the engineers behind yeah. the Matrix Yeah, I mean engineers. Yeah. So what's been happening since now? I guess you've been pretty busy, right? Yeah, sure. We've uh, worked a lot on the finalization of the PCBs and the schematics uh, on the hardware side. And so we have maybe a few things to show you on and, that. So, I mean, the, you must be very excited because everybody is, is really yeah, psyched yeah. about this. We were really pleased of uh, the reaction uh, on the feedback we had from NAM and since then. So yeah, we are really pleased about that. So one of the things I didn't understand and when I was looking at this was the way that the filters work. Because yeah. you've got a master cutoff and you've got these these two filter types as well. So how does how does the offset and the this this whole setup work? Yeah, so the master cutoff is an offset on both of the filters. It can go positive or negative, so you can fully open or fully close both of the filters with a master cutoff, which is again an offset on both of them. So you can set them at different cutoff bases and then you can offset them together with the master cutoff. Ah, so yeah. you end up returning it back to the original values when you're in... Uh... Yeah, yeah. You can... So, I mean, we should say, anything we're about here, you haven't had any of the sound design work or anything done on this yet. This is no, still very much... Yet, a... still, yeah. Um, so, uh, tell me a little bit about where, where the kind of... The, the idea for this came from. Because, I mean, it's a very bold synthesizer yeah. to make <laughs> in these days, right? Sure. It came from the idea, basically, to add Another scene to our collection which would be the big brother of the mini and micro roots. And then we have pe different people uh, throwing ideas and we had Glenn, our product uh, manager, who yeah, uh, had a proposition for that. But then a few people, including me and other engineers and so on, uh, proposed ideas and then it went to this big guy coming from very different ideas from different people. So the heart of this really, I mean, as well as the, is, is this matrix, which yeah. is, it's got a lot of people talking. It's a really brilliant idea to utilize it for all the different features. And you can use it to kind of root and attenuate all the control voltages as well, which is really cool, right? Yeah. And you can also, I don't know if it's well understood, but because uh, you have fixed uh, sources, the standard ones. You have fixed destination also, like in, which are pretty standard, let's say. And you have assignable destinations. So, okay, we can assignate any, any destination we, we, you want from any knob on the synth, but you can also assignate um, a modulation itself, an amount of modulation, because, for example, here I have LFO1 on the VCO1 pitch with some amount, and this amount can be modulated itself with just assigning this. So then I can have, for example, the LFO3 to the amount of LFO1 on the VC1 pitch. So it's ah, quite so deep. they're extra mod buses, effectively. Yeah. Ah, right, OK, interesting. So um, last time we saw it, I mean, it, you know, obviously it was very early days, and mm -hmm. that there are still things being implemented. Yeah. Right? yeah. So what, what have you been working on? Yeah, so we've been working on a few things. Uh, the VC sync was not working. It's now working uh, like, like it should do. Uh, we have also the ladder filter. We announced that we would compensate for the for the loss in the low frequencies. That's not in implemented. Uh, the high pass mode is not working properly. In can the we hear any of those things? If can yeah, we hear sure. So here that would be the cutoff roof resonance. Oh, there you've got some mod going on. Yeah, by. yeah. <laughs> okay, so that was right now. So here. So, so it's low pass, is it it's, uh, 24 or 12, it's switchable between 12 and... Yeah, the low pass, pass it's the... switchable, and the high pass is 6, in fact, because of the structure, and uh, so, so the high pass is also, it works with the resonance, so here, and I can add resonance to the high pass, I have a resonance high pass based on the ladder filter. Does it self-oscillate? I wasn't hearing enough kind of resonance for self-oscillation. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, here... 
Let's remove the sources. Okay. Right now. Ah, so that's right. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> nice. So uh, it must have been very tempting to kind of go poly. What was that? I guess the pressure was high. The pre we are frequently asked for that, yeah. And some of us are really also. I guess it makes a very big difference. So, so um, you said you got the oscillator sync working as well. Is that something yeah. you could show? So it's yeah. Uh, the oscillator one synced by the oscillator two. So let's hear here and then just change the pitch. And of course, you can modulate everything. So it's quite it's quite polite. Is the is the is the sort of edge going to be added with the, the brute factor? And uh, can you drive? You drive it a bit harder? This, yeah, it will be easy to drive it. So, for example, here, I can right, make it crazy. Go, go a little, yeah. yeah. And then just add some resonance. And it goes crazy. You cannot, yeah. But there's also a drive here, so it will be more easily here held with a sub, sub bass that would be a sign. So here, okay. I can drive it. So you get that nice sort of. Yeah. And I can also add good factor. And then that's not a sign anymore. No. <laughs> it starts to go a bit square then, doesn't it? Okay. So um, what else is what else has been going on as um, behind the scenes? So um, what we've done is also worked a bit on the analog effect. So maybe I can show you uh, some presets with the kind of reverberary sound that has been kind of effect. Yeah. So I can here show you some preset that, that uses it. Like that. You can hear the tail and you can shape the, the, the tone of it. So I can hear only the reverberary sound here and I can shape the... So it's, it's, a, delay, it's a kind of delay based Yeah, it's delay based yeah. with some complex feedbacks and so on, yeah. Is that is that to do with the amount of DSP that you've got available or is, a, is it possible to have a more, uh, a smoother, more kind of complex reverb in there? Or is no, there, is in fact, it's, it's, uh, it cannot be more complex than that because we have only because of the amount of BBDs we have inside of the machine because it's all analog and with analog comes the limitations of analog. Yeah. So there's no DSP going on? No so, DSP, yeah. no. Ah, that, that's yeah, surprising. That's why. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> that, so it's right. a fully analog reverberator. So oh, that's right, why it's okay. kind of different from the reverb sound that you can get from digital. And the other thing that was kind of interested in that it's possible to patch in a lot of extra CV into the external uh, external world as well via yeah. the patch bay. So, so you can patch external CV uh, to the destination of the matrix. So the 12, 12 of them, you can patch them from the other world. So we've got. You can hear. I think, I think, yeah, so you've got all of those. Yeah. So you, you have 12 inputs, 12 outputs. Right, gotcha. Yeah. So um, how are we doing for being on course for uh, delivery? Because when I spoke to uh, Sebastian at NAM, he was saying it was May, June. Are we still looking OK for that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, beginning of summer, June, something like that, yeah. So I'm guessing for you guys, it's going to be really exciting to hear when the sound designers get their hands yeah, on Yeah, right? yeah, sure. Because some, yeah, right now we hear raw, raw sounds uh, that we make ourselves and really excited to have really some good sound designer working on that, yeah. And uh, in terms of, I guess, because it's, uh, we've still got a number of, we've got uh, VC, three VCOs, is it, does it take a while to calibrate, or how, does it, how long does it take to kind of reach optimum uh, calibration and stability, or is it pretty fast? You mean in tuning? Yeah. yeah it's a matter of a couple of minutes, right. I know, yeah. Okay. So we've improved that part too compared to mini and micro boot and so on. And what about the sequencer side of things? Is that still being worked on or is that, uh, that all happening? Um, the sequencer? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's working, but the basis is working. We still have some work to do on the firmware on that part, yeah. And, and so uh, the Steiner Parker filter, mm -hmm. are you using exactly the same stuff that was in the uh, mini and the micro boot? Just all of you tweaked In fact, that? we redesigned everything, but it's very, very close from what we had in Mini and Microboot. It's some improvement here and there, and we also had the 24 mode, uh, but 
which uh, based mainly on having two Steinopico uh, park, Steino Parker filters in series. Yeah. So it's, the 12, uh, 12 dB one is very close to the mini and micro. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome.